Hello, I'm Ileana Pena from Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia as the Quality Chief. And this is my blog today from the ESC in Barcelona. It's been an incredibly exciting meeting. Everyone is so happy to be together again in person, and you can really feel the energy in the rooms. And given to that energy has been the awaited presentation of Deliver, the uh, dapagliflozin preserved function study that's been building and building in excitement. And I've got Scott Solomon here, who is the PI of the trial. Welcome. Scott Thanks, Solomon yeah. from the Brigham uh, and the PI, and he's been working very hard. It's been hard to reach him, <laughs> even in his office. <laughs> so give us like the, the overall view of the trial from your standpoint. Yeah, so uh, very excited, uh, first of all, to have a chance to talk to you about this, Ileana. And uh, Deliver, as you know, is the, most, the, the largest and most inclusive trial in heart failure with mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction. Both. Both. We enrolled patients with an ejection fraction of 40% or uh, above 40%. Uh, and we also included patients who had heart failure with improved ejection fraction, which is a group that had Very never been studied group. Yep. Uh, really before. Uh, and these are people who had EFs that had been below 40%, but had risen to above. Uh, Which is a substantial of number of patients. We, we, reverse, yeah. we reverse in the clinic, probably 35% of the patients, we reverse them. It's and true, since doing, we've gotten so much better with yeah. evidence-based therapies. Yep. And then we absolutely. say, what do we do next? You know? yep. So you're going to tell me what to do next. So tell uh, me about so, the results. So Deliver overall uh, showed an 18% reduction in the primary endpoint of cardiovascular death or worsening heart failure. Worsening heart failure consisting of heart failure hospitalization or an urgent heart failure visit. But what was really uh, remarkable about Deliver was that we saw that benefit consistently across the spectrum of ejection fractions. So the patients with an LVEF over 60% had the same benefit as below. And that was important because we had seen this attenuation in benefit with other Studies we saw with saw other in, trials. Your we other saw trial of Paragon. Paragon, we saw it in Topcat, we saw it in Charm, and there was a hint of it, a hint of it in Emperor Preserve presented at this meeting a year ago. Uh, now I think we think, based on the deliver results, that that was probably play of chance Luke. in Emperor Preserve, uh, and that there is consistency across the spectrum. In addition, we saw benefit in every single one of our pre-specified subgroups, including patients who were recently hospitalized or in hospital, another group that had been excluded from Emperor Preserve in some of the earlier uh, trials. Is that what uh, you call the worsening heart failure group? Uh, that is a group that, we, th this is sort of the subacute population, mm -hmm. those patients who are either hospitalized or within 30 days of a hospitalization. In the improved group, we also saw benefit that was uh, similar to patients who had consistently uh, greater than 40% ejection. So do you have repeated well. echocardiography in that improved group? We have no echocardiography in uh, deliver. Patients were enrolled based on uh, clinical parameters. We didn't actually obtain echocardiograms. For but you trial. didn't see any worsening or going back into you know, whatever it was that they were. Well, we before. didn't measure these things, okay. so we don't we don't necessarily know, but the outcomes in those patients were really remarkably good. So the message to the clinicians that are watching this, what do you want to tell them? Well, uh, I think that we now have a therapy that I think pretty definitively works across the spectrum of heart failure and irrespective of care setting. So, um, uh, you know, it's been remarkable, as you know, SGLT2 inhibitors, drugs that were originally designed for diabetes, for diabetes. Um, now uh, showing this kind of incredible benefit in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, heart failure with mildly reduced and heart failure preserved ejection fraction. And our pooled analysis of DAPA, HF, and DELIVER shows that the hazard ratio is essentially flat. Consistent, totally consistent. That, that that wide spectrum. So what's this drug doing to the hef, -HEF patients? Oh, that's a great Mechanism question. Mechanism of action, the great MOA. I, I mean, we really, 
we really don't know. But as you know, do we really know the mechanism of action of all the drugs that we I have know. used for years in heart but failure? But at least we thought we knew them before we studied them, and this has happened kind <laughs> we, of the reverse. We thought we knew, but uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, there are lots of different effects. There have been a number that have been uh, postulated. There is a diuretic effect, although we think that that's, that's mild, very that's mild. mild. Um, there may be a, a shift in the myocardial energetics uh, that has been proposed, but the bottom line is that we really don't. You know, know. whatever happens, happens awfully fast it because does. those curves split apart within six months. Immediately. We haven't and, seen that. Yeah. You know, we haven't seen that kind of split. Not only do they split apart within six months, but they split apart way earlier than that. And we're going to share some data at the Heart Failure Society of America about how fast. Uh, we actually do see a benefit, uh, and it's really, I can just say it's rapid. So you have the application in at the FDA already for the preserved? Uh, the, so you, you can know, get the coverage? The, uh, the, uh, the uh, FDA will review these data, absolutely. It'll be it'll soon. be probably sooner rather than later because of the consistency with the uh, empagliflozin uh, right. preserved trial. So, I mean, it's it's exciting. You know, we need to redraw our slides now, you know, that we always did for HEFPEF. Make sure the blood pressure is controlled. Make sure yeah. you check for coronary disease and stick right in the middle there, SGLT2, and then work on all the other comorbidities, which is going to be right. interesting to see what happens in this trial to those comorbidities that, that surround this, this yeah. population. It's very interesting. Uh, in addition to our primary manuscript, we actually published quite a few uh I papers, heard. <laughs> including um, one about frailty, one about uh, the effect on older people. So we showed consistent results regardless of how frail a patient was or their age. So even the oldest, frailest patients seem to benefit. And more, most importantly, the safety, which was basically very similar to placebo, overall was Amazing. also the case in even the most uh, vulnerable patients that we have. Wow. Well, thank you for coming. I know it's been a very busy meeting for you. We appreciate it uh, of you coming and sitting, chatting with me. It's my friend. great pleasure. So I, I'm going to close with this. I, I want our clinicians to really pay attention to this because you need to think about this drug and you need to think about it early. That doesn't mean you're not going to treat the blood pressure and you're not going to treat diabetes. But you've got to get your patients on this drug. And now you've heard that even the older, the very old, and the frail patient, which many of these patients are, particularly the women, that you can't withhold the drug. There's absolutely no reason. There's no safety issue here. It's a pretty comfortable drug. I've been using it in clinic, and I'm quite, quite happy with how well it goes and how little the side effect profile is. Thanks again. Thank you for joining me from the ESC. I hope you have a wonderful day. Ileana Pina signing off.